let's talk about Creature Comforts, a game that's all about animals making their cottages cozy. Welcome to Brains on Games. I'm Dr. Brian McDonald. In this episode, we're going to talk about Creature Comforts, which is a game that was given to me. Actually, I picked it up at Breakout in Toronto. So this is one of the review copies that I managed to get when I was at the board game festival in Toronto. Creature Comforts by Kids Table Board Games, KTBG. This is a game for between one and five players. You can play this one with kids age eight and up, according to the box. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. Games do take about an hour to play. Let's take a deeper look at Creature Comforts by KTBG. Creature Comforts is a game that's on the heavier end of light. You might say light to medium. It's certainly uh, it's certainly not a very light game to play. And like I said, it does take about an hour. It's a game where what you're trying to do is be the player who's earned the most victory points at the end of the game. And you're going to do that by building a tableau of comforts for your cottage and improving your cottage to, to just make it better. The better your cottage is for the winter, the more points you're going to earn. So you might be spending resources to have a flute for the winter. You might uh, be making soup. There's lots of food items. There's clothing like socks and things like that. There's toys that you might want to have in your in your cottage for the winter. Now you won't be able to see the whole board here on the little camera. I'll see if I can get a picture of it up here. But this is a game where you're placing workers around the board. So everybody's got to, these little critters who are trying to make their cottages cozy. And it's, it's a, a worker placement game with a twist that we're going to talk about, uh, a twist that I really quite liked. So various locations around the board are going to allow you to earn resources uh, like fruit or you can earn stone. There's mushrooms. There's yarn to make clothing. There's wood. These are all things that you need to build your improvements or to add to the coziness of your cottage by adding more comforts. Uh, and the, the meeples that you're placing, the workers, are little animals. So in this case, I have a little porcupine. Uh, your, each player has four workers that they're going to be moving around uh, throughout the game. You don't earn more workers. It's a worker placement game, but uh, there's no spots that you can block. So multiple players can have workers on the same space. The only special rule about the worker placement is that you can't have two of your own workers on the same spot on the board. Now you've got a marketplace of those comforts that are that those are at the very bottom of the board which you may or may not be able to see. You've got a marketplace here as well with the improvements to your cottage. So those are going to cycle through each round. Also these locations, these are forest and meadow locations and those are going to change in terms of what you need to earn resources and which resources you can get from each of those spots. So each each round, once all the workers have been placed and everyone's turn is resolved, these things are going to change. You're going to have different travelers coming to the inn and the travelers have some special ability that's going to change the round or, or some uh, resources that you can gather by visiting the inn. Once the board's all set up, there's a few things that are going to happen simultaneously at the beginning of the round. Each player has dice in their player color, two dice that they're going to roll. Those go on the player board. Those are your family dice. Then you place your workers around the board in order to hopefully earn the resources that you want. Beginning with the first player. The first player token is a worm and the first player is the early bird. So the early bird gets the worm in this game. The first player is going to roll four of these white dice. These are village dice. These numbers will stay the same for every player in that round. So these numbers do not change unless you have some ability that allows you to re-roll a die or change the number on one of the dice. But this is the wrinkle when it comes to the worker placement. I know only the numbers on my family die when I'm putting my workers around the board. And then I've got these village dice. So I've got a total of six dice that I can place. And the only way to activate the workers is if I have the right die in order for that space to be activated. So for example, here, in order to earn a wood, I need to place a die that's four or higher. And I do have a four and a five here. I've got a six on my board as well. So I could activate that space. There are other spaces where if you've got a one or a two, you're going to be able to grab two cards, two comfort cards, from the comfort deck 
And those are going to be helpful as well. You're going to need those in, in order to earn the victory points that you want. So maybe I've got a two here. So maybe I'll place that die over there. I've got some things that I, I can trade some resources here at the inn or I can earn a bunch of resources if I've got a two or a three. And I do happen to have a three that I can place over here. So the, the interesting thing about the worker placement is that you're placing your workers with incomplete information about which ones are going to be able to do their job and be successful. Now, if you're unsuccessful, if one of your workers doesn't get to do anything, then you get a lesson learned token with band-aids on it. So when you collect your workers at the end of the turn, you might get one or two of these. These tokens allow you to change the value of one of the dice on the next round. Well, you can spend it at any time. So you can either subtract or you can add one to one of the village dice or your family die. This is exactly how you play this thing. Each player is going to place their dice in order to resolve all of those workers. It goes around and then you start replenishing the market. Uh, the, the, the worm goes to the next player in clockwise order and then you start the whole thing all over again. Once you run out of these cards up here in the meadow and the forest, that's when the game is going to be over. You're going to start counting up your points. And like I said, it is kind of a tableau builder. So there are some cards where you earn extra victory points if you have another card of the same type. You might be able to place resources on some of the cards in order to improve them. I know that there were some cards that were all about uh, giving you extra victory points if you made more clothing. So the spinning wheel is going to give you one extra victory point for each clothing item that you've, you've built along the way. And down here in the marketplace, I can already see there are socks and there's a quilt. So those both count as clothing items. You're going to get some extra victory points for those. So you're building that little tableau along the way and thinking about, well, what, what cards do I want to collect and earn the resources to play so that I can maximize those points? What skills are you practicing, though, when you play the game of Creature Comforts? Well, you, you are planning ahead. You are budgeting all of those resources. You want to make sure that you're earning enough mushrooms to make the soup that you want to make in order to earn those victory points. So there are lots of things that you have to think about and think ahead about and budget. Uh, you're even thinking about which dice you're going to need in order to activate those players. So you've got to be careful about where you place your workers so that you're more likely to be able to activate them once you see what's rolled on the village dice. Now there are some improvements that will allow you to move these guys around so you might grab a bicycle for example where you can move a worker after the village dice have been rolled. That could be really useful if you want to earn those resources but you didn't get the right number on the die. You, you won't necessarily lose a worker in that case or, or lose the usefulness of that worker. He can still do something else around the board using the dice that are available. So there are lots of ways that you can think ahead about what you're trying to gather in order to earn the points that you want to collect the cards that you want or the resources that you want and when we are talking about planning ahead and budgeting and trying to be efficient and tackling your turns in an organized way those are all examples of executive functioning skills those behaviors that you need to work towards a goal and this is a game that does have that uh, I would say in spades because you're thinking about the dice as well. It's not just the resources. You have to think about, well, what, which dice am I likely to get? You know, what, what am I going to be able to do with these two numbers that I have and what's likely to happen once those other dice are rolled? And that's kind of the other skill that I think was we quite enjoyed about this game is that you've got to think about the probability of what what dice are going to come up in the board. Sometimes you have to have three even numbers. Sometimes you've got to have two of the same number. And depending on wh what you've rolled over here, uh, you're, you're going to have to make some, some decisions about what's likely to happen on the next round. I know sometimes we had some spaces where you had to have dice that were under a certain number, above a certain number, or the total dice placed had to, had to total above or below a certain amount. So you really were thinking about how likely is it I'm going to be able to activate that. Another interesting thing is that sometimes you need to place three dice. There's only a total of six, so younger kids have to think about, well, if, if I put a worker on two spaces that require three dice, well, none of my other workers can activate because I have to play the, place all of the dice there. So maybe you want to do that if you want to get some of those lesson learned tokens for a later turn. However, 
uh, your, your, your workers are not, of course, going to be as useful if you're dedicating all of your dice just to a couple of them. Final thoughts, though, about creature comforts. Um, this is a, a worker placement game, and I do like worker placement games. Trick-taking games, dexterity games, and worker placement are probably my three favorite mechanisms in games. And we did really enjoy, especially me, I think, really enjoyed that idea that you're placing these workers with incomplete information. So that was a really fun element, I think, of the game. And then the board is changing every round, so where you want to put these things is going to vary which resources you need or which numbers you need on the dice is going to vary depending on what's happening with these special cards that get added to the board. So we really, really enjoyed that. The theme, I mean, the animals are cute. The card art is cute. It's a very cozy kind of a game. You are trying to make the, your, your cottage as cozy as possible. The screen printed meeples are fun. Now, these wooden pieces are deluxe resources. So I, I was given a review copy of Creature Comforts but I did purchase the deluxe pieces uh, in order to have those to show them to you. Uh, and these are, all of the pieces in this game are great. The deluxe ones are, are special, that's for sure, as opposed to cardboard uh, circles that you're punching out. You've got these nice wooden pieces. They're all screen printed. Uh, it, I mean, these are nice. The artwork is nice. Everything about this game is nice. <laughs> it's a very nice game to play and a cozy game to play, like I said. You're also doing that tableau building where you're collecting cards and the cards that you, you put into your tableau are going to affect the victory points that you're earning from other cards. Uh, and th those combinations were fairly accessible. There's some tableau builders that I found it very hard to get combos where you're getting extra bonuses. There were too many cards. The cards I wanted wouldn't come up or they wouldn't come up on my turn. That wasn't the case for Creature Comforts. There's enough things happening where you can get some extra bonus points fairly easily uh, as long as you're judicious in how you spend those resources and, you, and uh, you, you're able to grab the cards that you want at the right time. So yes, there's some luck involved because you might be drawing from the deck or you might not get the, the cards that you want on your turn or your opponent might take that card that you needed. But uh, th these combinations of cards are certainly accessible and you will find every player when we played this game, anytime we played the game, had some combination that gave them some extra bonus victory points at the end. And that certainly makes it fun too. Are there downsides though? to creature comforts. Well, a couple of things came up for me and, and you'll see, I'll put a picture up. It is a game that came with a lot of baggies. I didn't need to go out and get extra baggies to organize the pieces in this game. There were tons of baggies in the box, but there's no insert. The only way to organize the pieces in this game is to put everything in little baggies and then jumble them up in the box. You know, that's not the end of the world, but it takes a minute to sort everything out and get everything organized when you want to play. Uh, I think the bigger one is that this is a game that I think young kids will enjoy the theme, but would an eight-year-old have the attention span for an hour-long game? Now, it's an hour long once you know how to play. And, the you know, when we were first learning, it took longer than an hour. The adults are kind of staring at the cards and analyzing their and trying to really optimize their turns. So for grown-ups, it was maybe a little bit longer. But does an eight-year-old have an hour-long attention span? If you look at, on average the attentional capacity of kids, it's about three to five minutes per year of age. So on average, you're going to top out for an eight-year-old at around 40 minutes. And this game is probably going to be almost twice as long as that. Um, could they stay focused and play for longer if they're with their parents? Of course they can. There are going to be expert board gamers, uh, you know, so young kids who really are into board games are going to like this. I, I think that you might have to tweak things to make the game a bit shorter, to simplify things a little bit for those younger kids, which means that you're probably going to be playing this game as it stands uh, with kids, you know, I, th I think 11, 10, 11, 12 year olds, especially if they're into board games, if they like worker placement are going to really like this because, and, and also because you've got these great components, this fun artwork, and it's a cozy kind of, it's not a game where you're fighting each other. It's a very cozy kind of a relaxing style of game. So it, it may be a downside that I think that the age rating is kind of optimistic, quite optimistic maybe, but we really enjoyed this. So thanks so much to the folks at KTPG 
for for uh, giving me this one. They also gave me a copy of the follow-up to Creature Comforts, Maple Valley, which another game with maple leaves in there. So uh, it's going to be KTBG uh, is going to be on the channel a lot in the, in the coming weeks. But uh, thanks so much once again to the folks at KTBG for sharing Creature Comforts with me. If you have any questions or comments, you can, of course, leave them in the comment section below the video, or you can email me at brian at brainsongames.ca. Brainsongames.ca is the website. That's where future episodes will go. The previous ones are already up there. Brains on Games is the X handle and the Facebook page and the Instagram feed, so we're all over the place. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to be notified of future ones, you can head on over to YouTube and click that subscribe button. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you next time.